I'm Cassie from the School of Biological Sciences at the University of Tasmania and today I'd like to talk to you about family. Have you ever wondered why mum and dad form these long-term bonds and kids stick around often long after they need to? This is not restricted to humans with many animals forming these complex family structures. In fact, despite popular belief, many species of lizards form these complex family structures from nuclear to extended groups. I wonder what these little lizards can tell us about the evolution of family living. I'm heading out with Dr Jeff Weil, an expert in lizard social behaviour, and his PhD student Ben Halliwell. Here we will investigate where they catch the lizards and the techniques they use to explore lizard family life. You've been doing this for 10 years now. What kind of things have you found out about their social structures? So males and females live in really long-term stable pair bonds. So we very rarely get pair separations between males and females. Offspring, when they're born, in most lizards usually disperse away from mum and dad immediately. But in these guys, they stay with mum and dad and they hang around in mum and dad's little home for um, usually a year, sometimes two. In uh, the Agania and the lizards we study here, promiscuity is much lower compared to other lizard species. Um, but it still does occur. So about 30% of offspring are the result of a, of a liaison between um, the female of the, of the pair and another male within the population. What are the consequences of this promiscuity? Yeah, so promiscuity has really important implications for the stability of the, of the family unit. Um, it influences the level of relatedness between family members. So it turns biological fathers into non-biological fathers, it turns full siblings into half siblings. And so it decreases the benefits to siblings of cooperating with one another, and it decreases the benefits to fathers of investing in, in those offspring. And over evolutionary time, this can influence the, the stability of, of family living. In addition to monitoring lizard family life in the wild, Jeff and Ben also catch lizards, which can be returned to their large experimental facility at Cambridge. So these guys are actually a burrowing lizard, and in the wild they live in rock complexes surrounded by sandy soils and so what we've built here with these besser blocks and this high clay content sand is trying to imitate what they have in the wild. Luckily agernia and lizards in general are actually really amenable to experimental studies so this means we can easily create large semi-natural populations in which we can manipulate aspects of the environment that we think might have been important in the initial evolution of family living. We can then examine the extent to which these factors influence family dynamics, specifically the dynamics of male and female pair bonds, levels of competition and cooperation between family members, and then ultimately the stability of family groups. So Jeff, you've just been awarded some funding from the Australian Research Council. What are the broader implications of this research? So Family living in uh, multi-generational family groups underpin social organisation and social behaviour across a wide range of organisms, including obviously humans. But what we don't really know yet is what were the initial triggers of family life. What our lizard model system gives us is, is a window into that er what early family life might have looked like. And this allows us to ask um, quite sophisticated yet also simple questions um, that will allow us to address the fundamental question of, of why animals live together. Every day researchers at the School of Biological Sciences at University of Tasmania are making discoveries that shed light on the fascinating lives of animals and plants around the world. If you want to learn more, follow us on Facebook or Twitter or visit our website utas.edu.au.